In this video, we will see how to use the Launchpad as an external programmer. You can take a look at this website from kerrywong.com. And here you will be seeing that this is the Launchpad. Actually, this is an older version and you can see the pins that is being used in this instruction. However, it's going to change for our newer version of the Launchpad. And this is the connections showing from the Launchpad to the breadboard and an external microcontroller unit and this is seen also in here test reset pins a pull-up resistor etc however the launchpad that we are using that i'm using is a newer version is the g2et version and you can see its layout here you can see that it's the G2ET one and it has uh, more jumpers than the previous one and its layout is different. So if we zoom in, you can see that on the upper side, this is the EasyFET onboard debug probe. And this section is used for programming and debugging the microcontrollers. And the part on the lower side is for attaching our microcontrollers on. You can have 20 pins or 14 pin microcontrollers attached to this section and this is the layout of the msp 430 g 2553 microcontroller unit and this is the easy fat debug probe you can see that we have seven jumpers here between the debug probe and the microcontroller section and we will be using only four of them the jumper block you saw Previously was the isolation jumper block and these are the seven connections on it. You can see that there is the ground, there's the 5 volt, 3 dot 3 volt, receive, transmit and the reset and test pins. Reset is the data signal that we are going to use and also test is the clock signal. So four connections will be done from the debug probe to our breadboard. So this is the topic that we need to focus on using the EasyFET debug probe with a different target. You can see that we can program other microcontrollers as well in the MSP430 family. So we will disconnect every jumper on the isolation jumper block. And we will connect the following signals. On bullet 3, you can see that we don't need 5 volts. We will need 3.3 volts ground data and clock actually the data is the reset pin and the clock is the test pin we can check it right here as well and the reset pin is connected to a 47 kilo ohm resistor as a pull-up resistor so we will see that in our setup as well so reset is the data and test is the clock signal so we can match them with our microcontroller so we can write these down reset and test and we can go back and check these in the pinout as well so you can see that reset is pin 16 and test is pin 17 for G2553. Now we have made our connections between our breadboard, the microcontroller, and the EasyFET debug probe. We can check these connections now. As I told previously, we have four connections to make. We will require 3.3 volts ground, data, and clock pins. Data is the reset pin, and clock is the test pin. So the 3.3 volt coming from the EasyFET debug probe is the red cable. I don't know if you can see it, but it's coming to our breadboard and it's connected to the VCC part of the breadboard. We have the ground, which is the dark gray cable coming to the breadboard and feeding the ground connection on the breadboard. And we have this white cable on the breadboard is the VCC or the microcontroller and the short gray ones are for the ground and the data is the orange cable coming to the reset and from the reset pin of the microcontroller there's a pull-up resistor 47 kilo ohms 
connected to VCC for sure, 3.3 volts. You can see that right here. And the clock pin, the test pin, is the yellow cable coming from the EasyFET debug probe and it's connected to the test pin on the microcontroller. So now we are ready to load our program to the external microcontroller. You can see that we've made the USB connection. And once we click on the debug button on CCS and click on proceed for skipping the ULP advisor, you will see that we will be programming. You can see the LEDs on the EasyFET debug probe blinking indicating that the programming is continuing and once the debug is finished you know that we have the resume button to make our code run on the microcontroller unit so once we click on it now our code is running on this external microcontroller not the microcontroller on the launchpad because we had disconnected all those jumpers and we made these connections from the upper side of the launchpad so easy fed debug probe so i'm going to detach this microcontroller unit and attach it to this little circuit board that I've made for an RF transmitter. You will see it now. You can see that I mounted the microcontroller unit on this circuit board and I attached this Dorji 4432 board, which is a transceiver of Silicon Labs. And on the left hand side, there is a receiver. So when I press these three buttons, three different color LEDs will be on at the receiver side. So you can see that it's working properly.